I'm Steve Gentili. I'm an elite powerlifter in the 275 pound weight class and I've successfully benched 573 pounds in competition. Um, today I'm going to give you guys three different tips on how to build your bench. Tip number one is going to be the use of accessories. Uh, some of the accessories that I like to use after the main movement is uh, inclined chest press, chest flies, and also weighted dips. And the reason I like to use these movements is it helps build up the power not only in my chest but also in the assistant muscle groups that are incorporated into the chest press. So the front delt and the tricep. Do you care where your elbow tracks? If you track it real tired, if you're trying to get it out a little bit wider? Yeah, I'm trying to mimic the same motion, right? Like even though that it's incline or even if it's a dip, you're still trying to contract, flare out the lat, mm -hmm. tuck that elbow in nice and tight. Okay, I got you. Cause like, like typically I just always, Unintentionally, I always find myself with real tight elbows and I, I really open up the dumbbell. Yeah, well, it's just kind of The wider you're at, the more likelihood you get the chance of injury, right? Yeah. So, like, if you're coming out too wide on dumbbells, oh, I want to emphasize my pec. Well, if you're going to emphasize your pec, you might as well just do a fly. Yeah. Like, if you, you want to build up your bench, mimic the bench. Now, do you ever think about kind of your back positioning when you're doing incline work or if you're arching too much or anything like that? It's always going to be the same. You know? so my, my, my positioning is you're going to open up in the thoracic, try to keep your butt planted because most people are going to try mm -hmm. to lift the hips. If your butt's planted, you're opening up in the thoracic, that, that's about it. Okay. Other than that, you're tightening the lats, keeping the core contracted. Yeah. So you're not getting that huge arch. Yeah. You'll be all right. Because like, the only thing I try to do when I try to, the, what, the way I coach is I try to get just kind of like just lay on the bench, tight back, and leave it there. Right. Because like the more I arch, check, the more I bring that angle down, and I turn it closer to flat. Right. So on incline, especially. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You just or like some people are just like, oh, my back hurts after that, and I'm like, well, you use too much back. What do you What do you think you're doing? You're opening it up. <laughs> Without marker to sabotage me, I can get him. So opening up through the thoracic spine, all that's talking about is incorporating more of your chest. So on incline, people have two different tendencies. One is to elevate their hips so high that they're turning it back into a flat press. Or two, keeping their chest completely out of it and only using their shoulders and triceps. So by opening up through the thoracic and, and basically bridging that rib cage up, you can incorporate a lot more pec into the motion. Go ahead and point to the thoracic spine for me. This, this right here would be the thoracic. So opening up, allowing the shoulder blades to get back tucked in this position is really gonna help open up a lot. <laughs> but we're not we're not opening up through your lumbar here, right? We're right. getting that out of it, just open it up on top. So one of the biggest proponents of utilizing accessories to build up your bench is to mimic the same motion of the bench press itself. So you're not gonna to change too many components of your accessories, meaning okay. <laughs> elbow positioning and chest and foot placement, because then you, all of a sudden you're doing a whole new movement. It's specificity with an emphasis on your weaknesses. So like if you say you have really weak triceps on a lockout portion of your bench, you're gonna to wanna to target that and, and really hone in on that weakness. So spending more time with tricep or yeah. even doing a lot more decline where it's more tricep emphasis. With dips, you really want to focus on using a full range of motion. So um, not overloading it right away. Work with your body weight. And you really got to find a position that's pain free. So some people are going to flare the elbows. Some people are going to tuck their pelvis. And it's really just what you can get away with for, for the most amount of reps without hurting yourself. So really when it comes down to accessories, you want to pick the ones that are going to best complement your lifting style. Um, certain people can't do a certain movement, whether it's an old injury or, or lack of mobility, and you're really doing yourself a disservice, forcing yourself into a position which is ultimately gonna take you out of the weight room due to injury. If I'm in strength phases, the rep ranges are always gonna be low, but with hypertrophy, I might go as high as 12 to 20 on a chest fly, as opposed to strength phase, I'm gonna keep it around eight.
as the weight decreases with the accessories, the rep ranges are going to increase in order to keep that same level of intensity. Because if the, if the weight, weight's less, you got to do more reps. idea at the shoulder right you're gonna keep your elbow tuck or I'm sorry your shoulder tucked in and you don't want to flare out too wide and for me I generally go a lot lighter on the on the fly because you already did the heavy work with the pressing it's more about getting a little extra blood flow to the pack and, and really just focusing on that contraction when you're all the way down being an isolating movement you're not really mimicking the same setup as you would on the bench it's already targeting the chest so for me it's more about the abdominals and keeping that contracted and a nice tight position so you're not rocking and using momentum in the motion so you could really target the chest. Common mistakes for the chest fly would be using a little bit too much body weight or as people call it like body English, throwing their body into the motion to use that momentum but also going too heavy. You know there's no need if you're doing the heavy pressing with the, the bench press and you're using accessory work like heavy dumbbells there's no need to go heavy on a chest fly. Yeah. Yeah, I think the majority of where people miss the lift is out locked. I know me specifically, it's been an issue in a couple of my meets. So re really isolating the tricep has helped blow my bench up tremendously. Any isolation movement is going to be at the end of the workout. You're always starting with the compound movement. And uh, specifically when you're talking about triceps, uh, it, it, the movements can't be too diverse, right? There's only a couple of different ways to attack it. So you really got to just utilize it at the end of the workout. So my second tip for building the big bench is going to be the utilization of rest. And not only am I talking about rest in between workouts, but also using deloads as a part of that too. So resting can also be how many hours a night you're sleeping uh, along with time in between workouts. So right now I'm structured about two days a week. I'm actually benching and those days include Tuesdays and Saturdays. So deloads can, can vary from person to person. I'm probably on the higher end of recovery, meaning I need more time to recover. So I'm deloading at this stage about every fourth week. Deloads can look different from person to person. Uh, some people do better with just time away from the gym. Personally, I feel best when I'm actively recovering. So I get into the gym and it's usually about 50 to 60% and I hit about a, a three sets of three reps. Um, with that, I do a lot more lighter accessories like banded work, uh, foam rolling, and just generally just getting my body moving in order to create more blood flow for the recovery. Yeah, I, I think having a set schedule is huge. You know, if you're committing yourself to getting stronger, sleep's going to be a big part of that. So uh, I, I really try to program sleep just like I program my workout. So like uh, 11 p.m. to 7 a.m., I'm trying to get in bed and uh, and set myself up to get some good quality sleep. Like when you're setting yourself up with, with resting in between workout sessions, it's also important to evolve that around the intensity of the workout. So knowing that. Uh, that my workouts are really intense for those first three weeks to allow myself that, that deload on the fourth week. So meaning if I'm in a hypertrophy phase, then the intensity is a lot less. I'm not necessarily going to need that deload on that fourth week. So tip number three would be body weight. And that means adding on more dense muscle to your frame in order to move more weight. Um, I've put on about 30 to 40 pounds since I started powerlifting in order to build up my total. And that went from about a five... 35 bench into now over 600 pounds and it's been a, a slow process obviously no one wants to put on a lot of body fat when you're adding on weight but uh, the overload of calories over a long period of time with smart training can definitely lead into moving more weight it, i'm not a big junk food eater so like a lot of my diet would be considered i guess clean eating but uh, I, I just have to eat more you know like a lot of guys tell me i have a hard time gaining weight and they're not willing to spend the sweat time sitting at a table force feeding themselves and i think that's huge uh, another thing for me too is also uh, proper hydration drinking enough water has helped me be able to, to force more food into my system I think drinking enough water, like especially the way I do it, right? Because I'm like, I'm eating 
um, clean food, so it's a, a lot more food involved in that. If you're eating junk food, it could be a little bit more dense. But eating things like rice, chicken, lean steaks, and vegetables, they're gonna help expand the stomach. So drinking water on top of that is gonna help even expand that even further. Also, it helps clean stuff out of the system. So you're moving, moving the food out, you can make room for more food. So there's not a general rule like how much weight you need to gain in order to move your bench, but if you're plateaued at a certain body weight, and I'm gonna go ahead and say like if you're relatively lean at that body weight, then you're probably gonna need to add on weight. Obviously, if you got 20 to 30% body fat or more, adding more weight probably isn't the smartest idea. You might wanna look into putting on lean mass to begin with.